Hello, everybody, and welcome to It's Not Only Football, Friday Night Lights, and Beyond. Today, we are talking about Season 1, Episode 9, Full Hearts. Zach? Smash heads back to where he grew up and deals with some daddy issues. Matt has the worst first date ever. Lila tries to make amends by making a cake, but it seems Street is moving on with his life. Wait, was it a cake or was it cupcakes? I don't know. I don't think we ever cupcakes. actually saw it. How oh, well it did cupcakes? you? It, was, it looked like blueberry it. muffins, didn't it? I just well, rolled my eyes when I saw her baking stuff. Like that no. was going to make up for what she did. <laughs> of course not. No, no muffin could rectify what. Well, welcome in there. everybody once again. This is Scott Porter. I play Jason Street. We've got Zach Gilford. I played Matt Saracen. May Whitman. I am the biggest fan on the planet, and I deserve to be here. And she is on Zoom today. We miss you being here because, once again, we don't get baked goods, much like Lila took to Jason in the hospital. Uh, listen, right. everybody, we are talking today about, like we said in the open, Full Hearts, Episode 9. This episode was insane. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, it was, I, it was just was a lot. You know what I realized watching this show? There's a lot in every episode. I think yeah. that's... That's like the hardest thing about doing what we do at the beginning of every episode of our podcast now is that we're going, okay, if it's not only football, what is it? And there is so much jam-packed into every single episode, and I did not remember that because when we were working on it, I'm doing very short scenes and very we're in very quick fashion because of the way we worked on the show, and then we're moving on. Or like you, uh, you said last episode, you barely worked in episode eight, so... It was like a whole week off for well, you. Well, and the other thing is when you watch these and you see there's so much in an episode, and I'm sure you'll tell us more about this later because you have your scripts with you and things that were in oh, the boy. script and maybe oh, yeah. we filmed, maybe we didn't, who knows. But you would film storylines and they just wouldn't even make it into the episode. Mm. There is a ton of that in this episode. There is a ton of – I mean if we want to do under review in this episode, there is just a <laughs> uh, metric crap ton of it that hit the, hit the cutting room floor. Uh, of scenes that just didn't make it into the episode. Uh, that being said, we know how much was crammed into it. What was this episode, if it wasn't only football? For me, um, it was evolving parent-child relationships, and some of them are way more dramatic than others when you have the honesty from Mama Smash to Smash about his father, when you have Coach and Tammy, Tammy coming to grips with their daughter starting to really honestly date, and you have someone like Buddy Garrity realizing that his daughter Lila is maybe um, – not the perfect little angel that he he thought he raised. And then the way he reacts to it is so lovely. And uh, mm. so that's what it was for me, like evolving parent-child relationships. Man, that's good. That's hard to follow, man. <laughs> it's really good. Good luck, Zach. Hey, Zach, if it was well, not only football, what what is it for you? <laughs> you know, it's a lot of beautifully woven storylines about characters we've grown to love. Um, I don't know. I think it's actually a very well titled episode. Scott's like rubbing his face and rolling his eyes. At because me you're over such here. a bullshitter. No, no, you're so no. good at bullshitting. No, no, it's no. It's, I, no, no, no. It is really difficult. It was very difficult. Yeah, to, to this, nail this was one difficult. Down. And as we've talked about in earlier pods, this isn't my strong suit. We love that. About but I you. thought Book Club was paying off. <laughs> I guess we should meet more often. Beauti okay, beautifully woven <laughs> stories about characters we've come to love. That's what this was about for Zach May. What was it for you? For me, at this episode, I mean, obviously, it's like, and also, I think this episode kind of ties into the next one. But for me, this specific episode, the, I just kept thinking of, like, the phrase, the truth will out. And it's like, I know a lot of these episodes are about, like, the truth coming out and revealing things. But it just felt like this was, like, a real tumbler of, like, lots of truths that had been kind of hidden and kept under wraps and then what the you know after effects of when the truth of these things that you know have happened comes out how it kind of changes the entire you know structure of the the worlds of these people starting with muffins muffins, with, right, muffins. Not gonna muffins can't it. bury the truth yeah i mean the, the episode right. opens with uh our two most conflicted characters or two of our probably, what, three most conflicted characters, if you throw Riggins into the bunch, where <laughs> Smash has, you know, he's, he's outside of the church, you hear this beautiful gospel music going on, and he's once again uh, shooting up steroids. And then he has to go in and face the church once again. And a scene that they cut, actually, was him having to give a testimonial to the entire congregation about him being so thankful for the money that he has received. Oh, that and, would have been hard to watch. I mean, it's yeah. already very hard to watch, and I think that's why the editors were up for so many Emmys, because they knew what could go, right? They like, knew what crap ton to drop on the floor. 
yeah, I think we we knew that how conflicted he already is. And then you you, you very quickly switch to Lila baking, which we've covered, I believe. They're muffins. Uh, and then praying at the altar at the church. <laughs> I mean, not at the church, at the uh, at the hospital before going in to see Jason after the revelation that everything he was suspecting was true was actually true. And there's that scene where he kicks a kicks a box at her. <laughs> Dude, you're, I mean, you're, you're menacing people with that wheelchair. Dude, you know, you got to use what you got. And Street, like, yeah. in that moment is just, I don't know, figuring out a way to, to rip his life down, like rip everything that he's has up in that room, like apart. Like yeah, this. it was another, like, yeah. very on-the-nose metaphor of you taking everything down off the wall, you were tearing it down, you were moving on with your life. Um, also, like, I have a question here, because there's that moment where, you know, you're like, oh, did you sleep with him or whatever? And she's upset and she's like, yes. And then and then you're like, how many times? And I'm like, that's one of these things where you're like, I just personally, I want to know, this is like kind of a hard question to answer, I guess, because it's so offensive, but and it implies there's cheating going on. But like, it's one of those moments where I'm like, it does feel like kind of extra like self-destructive to want to know the details and, and want to know, I, I understand wanting all the information and it makes sense, but like, are you guys, would you guys even want to know, would you have pressed for details? Would you, cause I'm the kind of person that's like the second I f- feel a hint of someone not wanting to be with me. I'm like, bye, I'm moving to Alaska. You'll never see me again. Like I can't, I don't want to know. You know what I mean? Oh, I definitely am. Um, I mean, I, I, okay. Something happened. That's enough for me. Yeah. I don't need to know the details. Same. Me too. I think in this case, Jason is not getting the space that he's like basically demanding and then like pushing and forcefully yeah. like pressing upon the other character in the scene, which is Lila, where he's just – he's like, go away. Yeah, I need I mean, time to process this and I need space yeah. to be away from it. And he has this really – very like deep need to have Lila in his life, which I think has been established over scenes like their little phone call when you see how long they've known each other and how they've been there for each other. And everything that Herc said, and I've said this before, is starting to come true. People are falling away and and mm-hmm. he is losing just massive amounts of, of friends from his life and people aren't there for him. And he needs Lila, but he cannot physically have her there with him. And this is the beginning of this kind of arc where he's just, I think, begging for space in a way that is really offensive. He's 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 hurting himself and hurting her at the same time to just try and make the point like we can't I it's can't It's the push away. Yeah. It's the classic push away method. But you know who's like, not falling away is the offensive who? line. <laughs> oh boy, they are just obsessed with you. First of all, I'm like wait a second. These guys are coming in and trying to be like we're going to protect you to the death and you're like who are you i've never even seen you in the locker room before <laughs> what what is, who are those people well this all right so so you're talking about there's a scene where the offensive line after so the school quick very quickly understands like the rumors fly right they find out right. about mm-hmm. uh riggins and lila and that this affair actually happened uh mm-hmm. tyra is trying to do lila solid at the same time as rubbing it in her face that she's like hey by the way perfect little lila garrity uh everyone's talking about this thing that happened with you and riggins and lila's like i can't talk about this right now i have to go to ethics class i Was can't it ethics class is that what she said <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> such a brilliant little gem by the by the writers uh and then and then you know, you've got this locker room scene where everybody's talking about it and Riggins walks in. And as opposed to ripping all the pictures down and throwing into a box, Riggins takes the picture of him in street in front of the entire locker room who's just watching him. And he folds it up <laughs> and, and, and just puts it away in a place that's safe. But that to me is like him admitting, yeah, it happened, guys. Yeah. And like from there, the offensive lineman led by uh, a character who in the script is named Pudnik. Ew. Now here, this is this is his name. His name is Pudnik, right? <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, played by James That's Powers. Nice. Okay, the, the character's name is Pudnik all throughout the script, and uh, he's a redhead. If, if anybody remembers these episodes, he's the offensive lineman. Thank you. And Thank he's you. the one who comes it. into the hospital. Thanks and for he's the one that's like, nobody hits our quarterback, which is a very – that's a very, like, true battle cry on a football team. I don't know what to liken it to, but it is a – nobody touches our quarterback. That is their, their oath. Their oath real, of honor. Our fake football team on this show, when we would go out in Austin, they would treat me like – like, I felt like no one could with me. 
because these wow. dudes were behind me. I'm not even kidding. So I might have mouthed <laughs> off a little more than I should have. I'm just a little quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of these guys, we remember, know. a lot of them played football at some point. Some of them were just actors. But but James Powers, it's the interesting thing about this whole Pudnik thing is that in practice, Coach, uh, while talking about Junior Silverio, who's like the big time linebacker, smashes old friend for the opposing high school. For Gatling. Gatling. Which, uh, what are we'll save it till we though. get there. I'm so curious. We'll save it, we'll about... save it till we get there. Uh, okay, but okay. he pulls a guy up out of the out of the squad and has a black jersey on him and says, "This is Silveria." But he mm-hmm. calls him Pudnik and he says, "Pudnik, come here." And it's not James Powers. It's not oh that my actor. God, it's a mess. And so they remove <laughs> the name Pudnik uh, from <laughs> the rest God of the, the episode. Editors. <laughs> they remove the name Pudnik for the rest of the episode. And from here on out, that character's name is Bradley. So in the next episode, they actually call him by name. His name is Bradley. <laughs> so Kyle Chandler, I don't know who made the decision, but at some point they said, we're going to have this character talking a lot. He's not going to be named Pudnik. So how do we Maybe how it's do we Bradley adjust this? Pudnik. Maybe so, he just decides to start maybe, calling him by his first name, Bradley. Maybe they're brothers. No, I mean, they don't look like brothers, this guy. I, well, anyway, uh, you know, but the offensive line, yeah, they're like, hey, <laughs> we're not we're not leaving our quarterback. We're not gonna let anybody you know mistreat you and then they give riggins the what for later by just completely destroying his oh my car god how's he oh gonna my fix god that? it's I... so scary too it's like the base but he cut they come at him with a baseball bat and he's just so resigned he's like yeah go ahead and it's like it seems like in a way he's like you know like this is i'm atoning like this is like what i deserve this is my karma and i have to take it you know it's, and he just sits there called? flogging and, yourself Oh. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that he's flogging. Well, That's there's okay. another cut scene that after that happens that him and Smash have a <laughs> have a heart to heart in the locker room. Riggins and Smash, and uh, and Smash goes, "Yo, man, you you fucked up, Riggs." Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, and Riggins looks at him and says, "Yeah." And he goes, "What are we gonna do about this?" And he goes, mm-hmm. "I would have done the exact same thing to anybody that did what I did to Street." Mm-hmm. So evens even. And that's like how Riggins looks at it. Yeah. Uh, how do we look at it? Is that like it's a step too far? Yeah. It's the muffins. It's the ma- it's the male version of muffins. I'm like <laughs> destroying it someone's fix- car is the male <laughs> yes. version of muffins. I'm like it doesn't ma- it doesn't fix yeah. it doesn't fix anything. Riggins should have baked muffins gesture. for the team. <laughs> no. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, but my my question is like watching it back, and I don't remember like there is never a line in the script that I thought Street should have been like fellas like. You don't have to like, but he does. He it. sort of does. He just he looks sort at them. Of does. Yeah. He's sort of it. He 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 gives you like it's like very like kiss the ring mafia. Like <laughs> it feels like it's an unspoken thing. Like they come <laughs> to you and they're like, you're the mob boss, and they're like, what do we do about this? And you're like, it's all right, fellas. You know, you give him like a. They, there's an energy there that's like they like have this crazy respect for you, and you sort of are like kind of in charge of you know what how this all goes down and i mean i feel like you sort of you sort of give them a like look i at least you're like i hit him you know he didn't hit me at least you give him you know a little context that's that was kind of chic of you nah, chic. Yeah. um yeah a lot of people came to visit me this episode coach comes to visit me tell me he's heard about the rumor tyra comes to visit you tyra oh, that that's was a fun. great scene yeah. That's a great scene. Tyra, so basically the rumors come out and, you know, everybody knows about Lila and Riggins and obviously you're hurt. Obviously Tyra's hurt. And there's just this great scene where Tyra is basically like comes to the comes to visit you and, and you guys get drunk. And and my favorite part of this scene, which, by the way, that's a really cool thing that like the two really hurt parties in this come together. And it's not even like she's like, oh, like, let's sleep together and get them or whatever. It's like a genuine gesture of let's spend time. I'm in this and like process this together. And my favorite thing about it, Zach, this involves you, <laughs> is that I feel like it's this incredible moment where you guys are making fun of the of Riggins and the Texas Forever moment that we have in the pilot. And he, you do a Riggins impression that I think sounds eerily similar to Zach's impression of me. Every time he does an impression <laughs> of me, go <laughs> seeing him at a restaurant or whatever, harassing him, he's like. Oh, you came over and you were like, oh, uh, you know, you need to. That is a terrible impression of me impersonating you. Okay, Zach, impersonate May. <laughs> impersonate May. No, yeah, I, impersonate it just me. needs to come up organically. Just, I can't okay. do it on command. All right. Okay. I'm sure. I'll I, I'm telling soon. you, it's very similar. It's a, it's an upsetting. You're like, oh, it takes us forever. Act you know, like you're May, your saying that muffins. You guys, that muffins. I'm not a monkey. Yeah, okay. Same muffins. I'm not a monkey. <laughs> um. Yeah, that scene was that scene was a lot of fun, and, and the thing is, is. Getting to work with Annie, uh, Adrian Palicki, we all call her Annie on set. Um, 
and cute. Getting to work with Annie uh, in limited capacity was just so fun because her and I were actually really good friends offset. She's a big comic book nerd. So am I. And we would just hang out a lot and like nerd out over stuff. So. I know. It was so funny to me because <laughs> you – I was like, yeah, this makes sense. You're a nerd. And then Annie, when I found out that about her, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I knew you guys had this little comic bond. I was like – what? Yeah. No. That's sweet. Yeah. But you don't know how many people were involved in trying to figure out, can Jason Street play quarters at that point? Because, uh, and I feel like wow. a lot of people nowadays don't even know what quarters is. Quarters oh, is a man, drinking game. Oh, man, we played game. quarters so yeah. much in high school. It was huge. Yeah, everyone okay. knows what it is. It's just okay. that we're in like our 30s and 40s. We can you explain it? it though, yeah. For so don't? so you, you have a, a, a cup in the middle of the table with beer or with liquor or some type of alcoholic drink in it, and you slam a quarter on the table, and if you can get the quarter to bounce into the glass or the cup, the other person has to take that drink, and then you refill mm-hmm. and play again, and it goes back and forth. But the act of slamming that quarter down onto the table for somebody like right. Jason, who has some grip but not total control of his hand, uh, was really interesting to figure out how to do that logistically. And and I mean, see, still this is honor one thing that, that I bet I bet it was on set that you guys thought, oh wait, could he do this? And this is one thing I will pick a bone real quick. Uh-oh. There we challenge go. flag. Sorry. Exact, challenge exact flag. Exact this would happen corner. every now and then, and it would just annoy me. Um, the writers sometimes <laughs> would write things that they didn't research, such as this. Or there was one time where in the script, um, they wrote that Kyle or Connie is like, where's Julie? And they said, she's upstairs. And there was no upstairs in this house. <laughs> and it really like made me angry because it was like, do your homework. I think they That's do the iconic. same thing at the streets house in the next episode. I think he's like, yeah, I moved my office upstairs, yeah. and I'm looking at it when I'm racing the kid outside. Uh, sorry, spoiler, that's next episode. And I'm like, is there a second floor of the street? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I can't. I think we all know that when you're feeling your absolute best, you can do amazing things. But sometimes it's really hard because life is complicated and difficult and you can feel overwhelmed or bogged down. And sometimes it affects the way that you feel like you're able to show up. But working with a therapist, personally, I think, can help you get a lot closer to the best version of yourself. Because when you're feeling empowered, you know, you're more ready to take on all of the crazy stuff that life can throw at you. And I know for myself, personally, therapy has really saved my life. I think it's really helped me with strengthening boundaries and being able to say no to things that don't serve me. And it's improved all my relationships and especially my relationship with myself. And so I think that if you want to give therapy a try, better help is a really, really great option because it's convenient, it's flexible, it's affordable, and it's all online. So all you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge because finding a therapist is kind of like dating. Sometimes it can take a while to find the right person. So if you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can help get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash FNL today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash F-N-L. Guys, I got to tell you about a new company that I discovered that I absolutely love. Movement. They have watches. They have accessories for any kind of lifestyle. You know, out here in L.A., there's a lot of movie premieres coming up. I like to wear a good blue suit. And they have this beautiful ceramic watch. That's right. I got a blue ceramic element watch, and it goes stunningly with my suits. But guess what? When that premiere is over and I got to get up, At the crack of dawn the next day with my kids, I go out into the Southern California sun, and I do so with my brand new Ritual Movement glasses. And I got to tell you, I got the tortoise shell with the green lenses, and what I love about these is they're matte. They're not slick, and when I'm active with my kids, they're not falling off my nose constantly because that's what usually happens to me with other brands of glasses. I'm out playing with my kids and my glasses are flying off all over the place and before I know it I got to get a new pair well not anymore not since I found movement they have fresh modern designs all made by a team of weekend mavericks who know what it means to go from nine to five work days to five to nine good times or play time with your kids every single adventure you can go on their stuff is going to be perfect for you trust me when I tell you that and I got to tell you movement is the epitome of bang for your buck huge value huge style and your wallet will thank you trust me so shop movement watches and accessories with confidence they have one size fits all for a chill shopping experience fast free shipping and returns always 
And it also makes a tried and true gift of great style and everyday confidence for a friend of yours. Or might I say, a certain co-host that refuses to change ever, Zach. So make your everyday sidekick for life's adventures a movement. Get 20% off at MVMT.com and use code FNL. That's right, MVMT.com, code FNL, and you're going to get 20% off. That's right. Happy shopping, y'all. Make it a movement. But that, that's all of uh, Street's stuff. And, you know, there's no end to what we were asked to do on this show in a very quick fashion. Playing quarters was not the most difficult thing. But, uh, you know, we find out as we go down the road, we've already seen Amy Teagarden be asked to learn how to do a fully choreographed dance, probably in, an, in a very quick fashion, maybe one day of course, you know, of practice and then go on stage and perform it. The same thing happens to Lila with cheerleading next episode. Of course, all the football stuff with you guys. But quarters uh, didn't have on the list, but clearly <laughs> was something we needed eight heads to figure out on the day. Yes. Um, what about like? Can we talk about Saracen for a sec? Oh that, hell is yeah! This a good time. It's gonna be I longer feel like than a Saracen second. Saracen is yeah. Saracen's ripping it. So this is a big. He's really starting to push his way to the front. This baby quarterback. He's like <laughs> my storyline now, please. That's can a, I can I just say real quick? When I got here, I'm like, Zach got here first, and then I got here, and May was already on <laughs> Zoom, and I was like, hey. Where's Zach? Like, we're all ready to go. And they're like, Zach had to go downstairs and eat. And I was like, what happened? He's like, he had a really tough workout. And I was like, oh, his little QB1 muscles couldn't handle the, the squats today. <laughs> Again, guys, he's going to go down and get some food in his belly. <laughs> I'm still off. So, you know, if I seem off today, it's because I am. I did I did check with him. There's no, like, serious medical condition. So, no, I'll, you know. I'll get through it. And, you know, I'm here for the pod. Um, Anyway, next time I'll be there and I'll bring you your special protein bowl like I usually do. I usually I'm usually there with like bee pollen supplements for you. But, I, I can't but like take ritual care vitamins. Of uh, I know it's hard. I'm going to do my best next time. <laughs> um, I feel like I I really like I've always been excited by the dynamic between coach and Saracen because I, like the ways that it sort of changes is over the years and like over the episodes to me is like so hilarious and iconic and strange and interesting but I love this sort of beginning of Saracen and Julie and like the relationship that's happening there and how you know they're sort of in this triangle with coach because it's like Julie has this very specific relationship and how she talks to coach and how she deals with things and it's very direct it's very blunt they have this you know natural rhythm and then you obviously don't and I I, I, there's like I, the whole the, this this episode is really like you kind of like, like you know you're getting ready to take her on a date and that's an amazing scene right because you get to work with Jesse and I mean that scene to me was really funny did you guys I like mean, that scene do we like <laughs> shut up was that all just a lead up to did you like that scene <laughs> well I have like my big lead up is that I really want to talk about your stupid jacket so like get okay. me there all right so the scene with you and Landry uh, while you're shopping. Uh, for the members only jacket, is that is that what you're getting at? That's what I'm getting. Yes, it's yeah. the members only jacket. We need to talk about I, this episode was like really fun for me. I remember because a, as I've said, I got to, to work with Jesse a lot. Um, I got to work with Luann, who is my grandmother. I love she, her. She's just amazing. And um, you know, I had stuff with Coach with Kyle. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, where I try to stand. Was it this one or the next one where I'm? Stand up for I'm like oh no that's tater. the next episode oh sorry I'll see save this it. is this is the problem is these two episodes actually like pair like yeah they're kind it's of like yeah it's like a two episode Lil, Lila arc and yeah. two episode Julie Zach like beginning arc yeah right? in the 90s Julie would have been like a to be continued mm-hmm. May, yeah maybe <laughs> I, anyway uh, um. <laughs> but this in this episode uh, yeah you I mean it leads up to the first kiss between yes that's you and, that's what happens at the end Julie. which yeah, by the way the i don't end. know if you guys noticed no sound on that kiss oh jeez yeah it was this hershey kiss kiss here we go it was his fish lips <laughs> it was just the fish it's lips it's so upsetting to um, me i just want to put out there i've kissed zach like not like you know in a personal way not may and us thank god no offense but like but zach and i had to like I had to straddle you in a car. Do you remember oh. that? Whoa. Blocked on Good Girls? Whoa. Yes, Spoilers. I, I remember. <laughs> Spoiler, we straddled. And like there was a lot of we kissing. Straddled. And I now I'm distressed. I have to go back and review and do a challenge flag on if he made a sound during our kissing thing. Because now I'm, I'm a, I am I'm feel like I was an unwilling participant. <laughs> well, I think we did, like, we did pretend French kissing. 
So there's yeah, just yeah, different yeah. noises. Oh, the whole yeah, this is different, right. different. No tongue, fake. Yeah, that's yeah, that's you're a whole not different level. To put your tongue okay, in oh, there. let's get oh, back wait, to Landry. No, okay, actually, okay. Speak, let's get back. funny story. Oh no, oh boy. <laughs> Let him go. Wait, did Let I already tell this story? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Which? So, um, Julie, Julie, Amy, whatever, whoever she is. Um, Her name's Amy Teagard. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> Amy and I, because it was real life talk. I never kissed anyone on screen before, and wow. so before that kiss at the end of this episode. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Shit. I was a young man, guys. You're I, a little virgin. Well, little also, baby virgie, I was like QB. 23 and she was like 16. Yeah, that's And bad. so we sat down and had a talk. We're like, well, what are we going to do? And Amy was like, I thought you'd know. I was like, I'd have never kissed anyone before. And she was like, oh, no. And it was like super awkward. And I said, I'll, I'll ask Scott. And I was <gasps> like, I, you don't remember this? I said, <laughs> And so I called you. Surprise face. Oh, no, and you I, did not. And I this said, is incredible. I was like, hey, Scott, like, when you and Minka kiss on set, like, oh, what shit. do you guys. Yes, this happened. What do you guys do? And you were like, I don't know. We just kind of go for it. Just kind of go for it. And I was like. Now, a little context here. I was like, well, context. I can't just go for it with a 16-year-old. All right, buddy? Okay, 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 okay. A little context. Minka a Kelly. little context. Uh, me kissing. This business is perverse. Me kissing man. Minka in the pilot and the, the whole do you have superpowers Jason Street scene out by my truck, uh, which I learned to drive stick for this show as well. It's, uh, I did a lot That's of things cool. learning. But that was the first time I ever kissed anybody on camera. Wow, you guys, and, and Jesus. Pete Berg And Pete Berg, in a very typical Pete Berg fashion, is offset going, Mika, Mika, ram your tongue down his throat. Bite him. <laughs> Bite him on the neck. I need no. more heat. I really want you to. And then he pulls me to the side, and he's like, Scott, what the f-? He's like, you look like you look like a rookie out there. I'm like, look, I know street is buttoned up, but just go for it. And so <laughs> cut to you calling me, and I'm like, I don't know. I guess we kind of just go for well, it. I don't know. I just be kissing people on screen forever. We just make out, and it's cool. No, Me and Mika are make out buddies on screen. Episodes earlier, it's my so first. So did kiss. you stick it your tongue in there? Because the uh, like little known fact, like it's like an unspoken rule that you're not supposed to actually ever put your tongue in the other actor's it's, mouth unless you've explicitly agreed yeah it's you know? up to the actors on the day yeah. or whatever no i don't we didn't i don't normally it's not but I'm something not asking you yeah. i'm asking that one did you do that oh, Jack? No. oh absolutely not it was a little hershey kiss <laughs> Ew! Don't say that either. That's worse. But I do want to put one thing out there about how twisted this business is when it comes to k- kissing and whatnot. It's so funny. Literally the other night, I was we were looking back at like old Disney Channel original movies, and like I was like, "Yep, audition for that one. Tried for that one. Did this. Did that." And I and I saw this one that had this guy in it that I actually remembered my first kiss this is so perverse i'm like going to jail um but my first like kiss was they made us kiss for the audition for the little rascals and i was what? like five and they made the chill they made the darlas kiss the f- alfalfa and like what? it was my uh, so my first kiss was when i was like five in an audition room <laughs> i didn't get that i didn't get that little darla okay. and so i that kiss was for not anyway first of all, i'm okay first of all you you don't go to jail for that that's not you Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, yeah. I've, I've done the a lot of therapy. Director. I'm okay. Secondly, I promise I'm okay. Let's get back to Landry to Friday Night Lights. <laughs> and Saracen. Uh, the first time we see them, actually, they're hanging out outside of the field house, and Coach comes out and he wants to talk to, to Saracen. Now, Saracen is begging Landry to just stay at his house so he can go on a date with Julie and watch Grandma Saracen. Mm-hmm. To which Landry says, You know, I'm not comfortable with this. To which your reply is, I'm not talking about this anymore. I've already told you my grandma's not a witch, <laughs> which, which I love that it's a it's a continuing thing. He mentioned that he like the supernatural element and your grandma's a witch back in like episode two. And it's still going on, which I love. But then coach pulls you aside and says, uh, oh, hey, Lance. And walks away. <laughs> Yo, the Lance bit. We have to talk about that. Like, yeah, because that's one of my favorite things on this entire show is how like ingrained it becomes that he just Landry just fully is Lance. It's like, it's not like it happens once or twice. It's like, that's what it is. And anytime they try to correct, it just doesn't take, it's like too bad. So like, was that a scripted mo? It's, it's so easy. It comes so like easily off the cuff for Kyle, Kyle Chandler that I'm like, did he just make that up? And then it just stuck or I thought for sure with the legend of Kyle Chandler, this was improv. <laughs> Me too. I mean, because the man, too. the man's brilliant and he does and he so does much off the cuff. It, right. This yeah. is actually scripted. 
Wow. In in like the very first pages of the script, no rewrites or anything. It's scripted. Lance. That's really is this, really This literally brilliant. was the first time he says it. Yeah, I think this is the first time he says it. I think this is the very first time he has any interaction with him. Uh, and that was actually a question from one of the listeners, uh, Lefty Ader, was did Coach Improv calling uh, Landry Lance? And the actual, the actual answer is no, uh, which wow. is crazy. So, I, hey, we always say the writers are brilliant. They're great. The actors great. are brilliant. Like, the, it's, it's a combination of the two. But then he pulls you aside and, uh, and he has a really tough conversation with you. Coach does. And there's this really interesting thread this episode of Saracen – being established as an actual leader on the football team. You see it earlier when the offensive lineman comes up to you, when Pudnick slash Bradley comes up to you and says, hey, you know, what's going on with this Riggins thing? You need to fix this. I know, but what am I supposed to do? I, I don't know. I can't undo it. It doesn't I know. seem fair. But it's it's cool that everyone is coming to you as QB1 now, like as actual, right. honest, ingrained QB1. But now Coach puts you in a really uncomfortable position and basically demands you tell him what's wrong with Riggins. Yeah, yeah. that sucks. I mean, how how is it dealing with Kyle Chandler when he's giving you the business like that? I, you know, it's it was always a little nerve wracking, and even by the time we got to season five, you know, he, he he's a little. I, I think I got. See, I mean, I'm stuttering just thinking about it. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, he's great. He's just so fun to be in a scene with. But it is. I mean, he's so there that you're like, you feel like a 15, 16 year old kid getting, mm-hmm. you know, in an uncomfortable position. That sounded weird. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> even more uncomfortable is watching you and Landry uh, shop for retro clothing in a thrift store. Oh, my God. Oh my God. <clears throat> With Landry picking out I a... I can't. I, I can't. <laughs> a members it's only It's so jacket. amazing. And also, I just want to point out that, you know... You're like the begin. One of my favorite lines in this episode is, you know, this is like, like kind of going back to what you were saying, Scott, about parent and child stuff, like them kind of realizing that Julie is moving into this phase of being a woman and she's going to be dating and all these things. And I just love there's one like toss off in the beginning of the episode where coach kind of goes, she, you know, Tammy's upset and stressed and coach goes, well, at least she's not interested in a serial killer or one of the Riggins's. <laughs> and I think that's like so brilliant. <laughs> that comparison is iconic. Yeah, um, but yes, then you're shopping. Bad. Yeah, but then you're shopping and they choose this frigging members only jacket, which is funny enough in and of itself. I don't know how. How do you guys feel about members only jackets? I think it's complicated. I don't know what it is. I, I, it's, I, I didn't you don't? either. Jacket? No, I have no clue. You guys, I just know that it becomes oh, it's a bit. The whole thing. I just know that it becomes a bit for it's, like the rest of the episode. He shows up at Coach's door and Coach is such like, a good bit. "Is that a members only jacket?" Well, yeah, so what is it? The Why? first thing he notices, what is it? and then like, okay, all I I can't even really explain it. It's kind of like you either know or you don't, and I just love so much you wear. It's funny enough, and then you coming to the door and Coach being like, is, the first thing he says is like, "Laser focused." Is that a members only jacket? And then he's like, "Saracen, take your jacket off." He's like. Take, take off the members only jacket and you're like no well i but and he's like take it off he like makes you take off your members only jacket well, because, and yeah, hang the, it up they're making julie change so for the date did your parents ever do that to you make you change for a date may no first of all i was like i've always been a raging tomboy i did not I was always like in a baggy cargo from Gap and a sweatshirt. Like there was no fear when it came to that. And also my parents were like really trusting and really like I was a pretty I was pretty like like even though I was being a bad boy, I was like a careful bad boy. I was like, I'm not going to get into any dangerous situations, but I will, you know, do some kissing and some whatever, whatever. But like I was pretty responsible and I also just hated wearing skirts or dresses. So that, that never was really that much of an issue. But they I get it. I mean, she comes out, she's wearing like huge red heels and this like really revealing dress and they're sending her off with this guy that also I think is really funny. They say in the beginning when Julie is talking to her friend about the date or whatever, and she's like, that's not a football player, like just straight up. Wait, we have to stop right there because that friend is not just any friend. It's not? Who is it? We have a lowest sighting. We have a full on lowest situation. Yeah, she has words. Uh, she yeah, she words. has words. She says words. She does not yep. like you at all. And no. but they like write her so soy nutty crunchy in the script. She <laughs> soy calls, nutty crunchy. She calls Julie a seedling. She's like seedling. People change fast. Especially when they join a football team in the script, and I'm so glad that like Lois is not that on screen. Seedling? Yeah, she yeah, calls that's her seedling. Crazy. I'm like, what that's... are we doing here? <laughs> Thank you.
However you're spending your winter season, make sure you're getting the best sleep with a set of buttery soft sheets from Bowl & Branch. And let me tell you, if you're in L.A., where you go through a season in a day, 30 degrees in the morning, 90 degrees at noon, 30 degrees again at night, trust me when I say the softest 100% organic cotton sheets you have ever felt from Bowl & Branch are the kind of quality you will feel immediately. They keep you cool. They keep you warm all day day long. Yeah. And you know, for me, I am a really hot sleeper and I've constantly am like sweating through my sheets and it's a nightmare. So anything that has any kind of synthetic material, I can feel it a mile away and I already have a terrible night's sleep. And you know, it's hard enough when you sleep with four dogs in your bed as I do uh, to get a good night's sleep. So these sheets have really saved my life because they immediately put my dogs to sleep and I stay comfortable and cool all night long, baby. Yeah. And that's because they feel buttery to the touch Mm. and are super breathable Mm. and they are perfect. Mm. for both cooler and warmer months or days. Yeah. And, you know, I think it also has something to do with the fact that they use the highest quality threads on Earth. Their sheets are made from slow-grown organic cotton, and the softness is just simply superior. That sounded chic the way you said that. They have over 10,000 other raving reviews, so make sure you go check them out. Best of all, Bowl & Branch gives you a 30-night risk-free guarantee with shipping and returns for free on all U.S orders. Make the most out of bedtime with Bowl & Branch sheets. Get 15% off your first set of sheets when you use promo code FRIDAY at BowlandBranch.com. That is Bowl & Branch B-O-L-L-A-N-D B-R-A-N-C-H dot com. Promo code FRIDAY. Remember those New Year's goals you promised yourself you were going to try to stick to? Well, HelloFresh is here to help you eat better by delivering fresh ingredients and easy recipes right to your door, taking the hassle right out of dinner time. HelloFresh now has 40 weekly recipes to choose from, so you could say bye-bye to your recipe rut and treat yourself and your family to exciting new flavors every week. I mean, Scott, you've been using this with your family, haven't you? Yeah, making fast and fresh recipes with my entire family. The kids want to get involved. It's really cool to see. And the recipes are completely adaptable. Uh, I mean, yeah, we had Thai pork bowls and crispy seasoned chicken with scallion mashed potatoes, and the kids wanted to eat every single bite because they had a hand in making it. HelloFresh's latest lines of meals featuring robust flavors and filling portions are ready in less than 15 minutes. You can enjoy taste and quality done quick with recipes like falafel power bowls or seared steak and potatoes with Bernays sauce or Southwest pork and bean burritos. What, what was your favorite thing you made? Mm, personally, I've been trying to eat more vegetarian food lately and so I had a vegetarian curry that was so fun to make because curry has always mystified me as far as how to make it really good and I was actually surprised that I was capable of making a good curry. Yeah. So they've got recipes for every shape and size. Whether you're cooking for yourself, you're like Billy Riggins trying to cook for you and your brother. You're like Saracen just trying to make something that his grandma wants. Or you're like us and you're looking for very, very tasty meals uh, that you can make quickly and on a budget. Go to HelloFresh.com slash FNL65 and use code FNL65 for 65% off. Plus free shipping. What? That's HelloFresh.com slash FNL65 and use code FNL65 for 65% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Bon appetit, Scott. Bon appetit. But yeah, full on Lois sighting, which is great. Um, yeah. They get they get you ready for the day. And the rest of the episode is very uncomfortable for you as well. Uh, because you yeah, go you go to see Aragorn, Aragorn, Aragorn. Or yeah, dude, it was like bad. Aragorn. I mean, this like the writers just love to poop on me and just make me look like such an idiot. Well, they made you a leader in the locker room, but then nobody else in town cares that no you're QB one. Cares. Not there's yet. No, there's no tickets. I try yeah. to like be like, hey, I'm QB one. I'm cool. And they're like, no, go away. And then uh, you know we get the. We get the phone call. Yeah, it goes from uncomfortable to like heart wrenching, <laughs> and, and we have very sweet all at the same time. But you you end up mm. you end up at really good your house with with your grandma. You get a call, panic call from Landry, who swears he didn't touch her. She's locked herself in a closet. <laughs> and I to no, I mean, no, I mean, I know it's uh, it, it's it's earnest. But it's, <laughs> it's I think this is one of the more memorable scenes of the entire series. I think when I people agree. talk about the show, you singing to Grandma Saracen. Uh, Mr. Sandman and, and acting as your grandfather to take care of her uh, 
it just blows me away. I think people remember this scene. What was it like having having to do that in that moment? Well, leading up to it, I was like, I'm not going to sing a song, stupid sing a song, Mr. Sandman. Come on. It's going to be so stupid. And then, of course, they're like, no, Zach, you have to do it. It's it's part. It's a huge story point. So I was like, all right. I was just totally like embarrassed leading into it. It's vulnerable. But again, Luann, I mean, it's just like, she's so amazing. It's like, you look in her eyes, she's like quivering in my hands and I could feel her, Mm. you know, just go calm within it. And it just was, it was one of those moments where I think as an actor, you're like, get over yourself um, and just be in the scene. And like, you can do weird Mm. stuff that you're like embarrassed about or whatever. Um, But yeah, I think this was also a moment for me and Luann that really established our relationship um, off camera so that we could do a lot more stuff on camera throughout the rest of the series. Hmm. It's so special. And like Julie later, you know, afterwards, I know I love that, like you're self-conscious about it and you think the date's gone badly because Julie sees it. And then she has to, she's asks Landry for a ride home. And I think like, you know, there's something really beautiful that you just see her at the end, just have sort of like a thoughtful moment and say like, it was really nice because I got to see the, fir- the real Matt Saracen for the first time. And I think like that kind of echoes the sentiment of for even like the fans and the watchers and stuff is like, you watch him go through this, like, you know, transformation of really, desperately trying to sort of appear as someone else and like despite his best interest he can't and you know and we also just got a text from our producer which i'm obsessed with it says from the wikipedia page members only jackets are often used as a source of comedy and an example of outdated fashion so (laughs) great perfect clearly there you go and i just but i do really think there's a a thing that that's kind of like a bond not only for you and luann and those characters but also like it's it says something about julie that the thing she responds to the most about you is seeing the way that you handle this huge responsibility with such like delicate vulnerable care it's it's really really nice good job Thanks. And you have a good singing voice. I thought it was really sweet. It's fantastic, and it, it lands, and it is so heartfelt, and it's another example of these changing parent-child uh, relationships, except in the opposite direction, mm. where you right. see that Matt is having to take more and more care mm. of, of Grandma Saracen. And despite Landry's best effort trying to ruin everything by his discussion at, with you at the lunch table the next day with probably the most awful line of the entire episode oh. uh, singing to your grandma is probably the best thing you did last night it might be the only thing to get you into Julie's fun house like what the I can't I do can't, you ever look I back and just I go can't. why why it, it, there's so much I feel like in our career I'm just like I can't believe I was a part of it, that, that scene <laughs> god dang it well, All I right. didn't have to say yes. that it's not it's yes. not cool there's two more big storylines uh, and, and we don't have a ton of time but I want to pay respect to both of them because yes. they're very important. They're very tough to watch. Uh, Smash is homecoming to Gatling. Gatling, mm. uh, the high school that it is uh, loosely based on, just uniforms-wise, uh, is Georgetown, the Georgetown Eagles, uh, which we actually did a lot of shooting in Georgetown in seasons two through four. They built this awesome athletic conference uh, uh, complex. It's pretty cool up there. Anyway, uh, based on the Georgetown Eagles, but it's him going home, and and this blows my mind. I don't remember Dylan being this massive of a place. But the more and more we see, you know, they talk about inner city. Gatling is the inner city of this what well, no, network not. of network of cities. Like Dylan is a part, and I think people don't realize, you know, Odessa Permian is actually a, a pretty. It's larger than you think, and I think Dylan is ba- maybe basically loosely based on that but as a viewer may did you ever get a sense of how big dylan was because we say small town all the time but it feels like it's larger than i ever thought it was yeah it's weird i feel like as a viewer it is it's kind of like it's it's this amorphous feeling i mean it's so i think so much of it is about the feeling of it being a small town that you you just like buy into that and you sort of forget kind of what the actual like geographical thing is and i think you know so much of this episode and the next is like based around like small mindedness. And I think that also sort of has this like claustrophobic feeling that like, Mm. it sort of feels like Dylan is this like isolated little claustrophobic, you know, sometimes too small minded to a massive fault, um, little kind of like area, you know, this little like Island in there that then you sort of see these, it's like they, they, it makes the, the other places feel like outsiders, you know? It's small minded is a great way to phrase it because you hear it from Slam and Sammy Mead in the call line when they're talking about going into Gatling. You hear it from, from Mayor, Mayor Rodell where she says something awful about I don't want to stay at this motel because pardon me, I don't want to 
be the victim of a drive-by this weekend, which is just, again, just so awful. And But, you know, there are so many times in the show where the show challenges you to have conversations about these things. And uh, it's just abhorrent the way that they talk about it uh, as they're going in to play this team. But you see that it's where Smash is from. And I think that we gain so much perspective into him and his mother's relationship. We find out that his father has passed away. Mm -hmm. Uh, We find out that his mother moved him and his two sisters out of Gatling, and she's doing it all on her own. And we see why Smash is fighting so hard. He has more to fight for than I think anybody else uh, on that team uh, as of right now. It's just seeing his storyline be filled out like this and understanding where he came from, seeing the meeting between him and Junior Silverio when they have the conversation about the other kids they grew up with and how none of them really have a shot to get out besides the two of them because, you know, one of them is doing a bid or, you know, in, in prison or like all of these different things. It's just it really starts to uh, inform a little more on Smash. And it in no and his way, relationship shape, or form, with his sister. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the Both family. Them, yeah. his, his whole, like, the dynamic, you get such an insight of with him and his family and, and kind of the, the tightness, like the close-knit, you know, relationships that they have. And I feel like even the moments where I thought it was, really powerful and and interesting and complicated where smash's mom is sort of talking shit about the dead dad and sort of that he's like this off limits thing that they don't talk about and that they you know his mom hates the dad and everything that happened and you sort of don't you don't really know exactly what it was like and there's you know this culminates in this moment where you know she's talking shit and says all these things about like and i kind of she kind of finishes with like you know sometimes i think it's we're better off that he's dead you know and smash has this big reaction and gets really upset and she sort of you know realizes the error of her ways and in, in framing things like that and 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 reinforces that her she like takes responsibility for that and admits that she she loves him and still that she still loved the dad and and that it's hard for her and painful for her and that she makes mistakes by having again the truth will out you know it's like she she tries to sort of pass off this version of what she how her emotions make her feel in this reactivity and then You know, she realizes she has to be honest with herself and with Smash and vulnerable and be speak from a place of pain and truth. And I think that that scene was really powerful. Oh, yeah. That last scene when he comes home late and talks to his mother is like one of my crazy so far. It's one of my favorite scenes, if not my favorite scene of the show. Um, Yeah. It just was such a honest conversation between a mother and a child. And you see him understand things and like it's almost like he grows up in that moment which i think happens to us we have those moments in our life where we kind of realize things we never did and it changes our perspective on the world um Mm -hmm. and i just thought i just i love that scene i was my cry meter was out if that, yeah. that what we oh call yeah meter? we oh need God, i do need Zach, a cry meter but Jesus. but they uh <laughs> yeah liz michael and, and gaius charles uh really really handle that scene deftly and uh and then he goes sees his his father's grave and i think they both Jesus. allow themselves to grieve through honesty and i think that's really important for both of those characters yo if you want to get to the next level of wellness cbd can help but your average old everyday cbd oil will not cut it Next, Evo Naturals develop smart sorb technology. This is clinically proven to help your body absorb CBD four times better than regular CBD oil because oil doesn't mix with your water-based body. Oil and water, we all know it. They don't go together. This stuff works faster too. When you need to de-stress, sleep better, recover from an intense workout, reach for Next Evo Natural capsules, gummies, mints, topical creams. I, I Honestly, I take these things in the morning before I wake my kids up. I take them before I go to bed to fall asleep better. This stuff works. I'm not kidding. Smart sorb technology improves CBD's ability to be absorbed, getting into your system in as little as 10 minutes. Most CBD oil found in like tinctures and gummies and capsules, they achieve 2 to 10% absorption, which means like 90% of what you think you're getting is actually just wasted. But Next Evo Naturals are scientifically formulated to deliver more CBD in a way that your body can actually use it. And fast, it's proven 30 times better absorption in the first 30 minutes. Next Evo is CBD at its full potential, so you can be too. Their all-natural products are backed by more scientific studies than any other CBD brand. 
developed by experienced consumer healthcare and pharmaceutical professionals. They're vegan, GMO-free, gluten-free, THC-free, capsules, gummies. They're derived from 100% U.S.-grown hemp. Make CBD a part of reaching your full potential. Try Next Evo Naturals, capsules, gummies, mints, and topical creams with smart sorb technology, clinically proven to be better absorbed by your body. Get 20% off your first order of $40 or more at nextevo.com slash podcast and use promo code FNL. That's 20% off at nextevo.com slash podcast, promo code FNL. You know, we, you said the evolving relationship, there's a couple of medical issues that start to happen with smash this episode, which will Mm. continue as we go down this road of steroids, but, uh, shortness of breath and anxiety, panic attacks, which he has one in the church in a Mm. cut scene that I mentioned earlier, but he also has one. He's working out with his sister, Sheila, the, the middle sister and, uh, and uh, oh, she starts to way, figure out. Sorry, like, does yeah. she get? I can't remember. Does she? Do they feature her more as we go along? Because she's so good. She's so good too. She's amazing. Actually, that scene was written with them playing basketball. It changed to working out. But I remember she she could play. She could like really play too. So it was. Uh, I, I think uh, they were both kind of bummed that they changed the location of the scene. But that happens sometimes. Um, it leads to a Panther victory. Um, there is on more, the heels of Smash. There is yeah Smash and Riggins. Smash with a big moment. Well, and Riggins. Uh, Riggins being pulled back into the game after looking mm. like he dislocates his shoulder. I know that's what I, I was watching it. I was like, "Oh man, he dislocated his shoulder," and then he just <laughs> goes back in there. I was like, "Okay, cool." Well, you know, I think I, I think a lot of people's reaction is that is so r- irresponsible of Coach Taylor to bring him back in. But again, so much. There are four scenes in the script that were cut between Sma- between uh, Riggins and Coach, where he's trying to help Riggins. Uh, Riggins is quitting. Riggins is not showing up. Riggins is not there mentally. Riggins is just, he's so distraught over everything that's happened. And Coach is trying to help him. And at the end of the game, him saying, it's time for you to step up, son. Uh, makes a lot more sense if you have all the scenes. Right. And if you don't, it just kind of looks like, well, Coach wants to win, so Riggins has to go back in. But Smash leads them to victory, and he says at the end, let's go home, Mama. And it's him slamming the door, or not slamming the door, but shutting the door on, you know, Gatling being home and him understanding home is with his mom, wherever they may be, right. and his sisters, mm-hmm. which I thought was so, so touching. Um, yeah. During that game, we get the beginnings of a really awful situation of what's going on with Lila. We saw how the, everybody handles Ugh. the fallout of, you know, Lila and Riggins hooking up on Riggins' side, physical break you know destroying his car really you know just taking it out on him almost like in a physical way uh but it's much more sinister and and really difficult to watch the way that people are starting to treat lila um and buddy garrity sees it for the first time when she's at the game and everybody's talking a lot of smack you know what what is riggins wear boxers or briefs uh hey you know all this like all this goading and they're calling her many awful names too i mean you know she's getting called Matt you know ugh, it's it's awful it's tough to watch it's bad. and she goes under the bleachers and buddy joins her and something that's not scripted in that scene that I thought was just beautiful um when buddy says she says I've never seen you leave a game before after he says look you're my daughter mm. and you made a mistake but that's what we do we're humans and we make mistakes and we grow up and then she takes a beat and she says, you, I've never seen you leave a game before, Daddy. And he goes, it's only a game. Mm. You're my daughter. And that's not scripted, actually. That's oh, not really? in the script. And, and, and that would wow. mean – it couldn't mean more from any character in the show. It couldn't change your view of any character on the show, I think, more than Buddy, who right. has just been up to this point like a caricature. And this booster, this guy who's way over-invested in these young men's uh, successes or failures on a football team. And then – He's just so human in that moment. And Brad has daughters in real life. And, and I just – I felt him talking from his, his soul, uh, from his, like, father's soul. I <laughs> love – I mean – and it's, Cry it's, meter. Cry you know, meter. It's one of those things where I love – you know, we do it on the show, but it happens on a lot. And I love those scenes where you understand a character more than you ever did before. Or, they you know, they, they, they become much deeper. Sounds kind of <laughs> trite, but – you know, there, there's just so much more there than you've seen. And, and that's one of the things I love about series as opposed to like a movie or whatever is, you know, you can you, yeah. you can really develop these people and, and give them more and more to them, um, which if you only have an hour and a half, can't really do it. Yep. And that's why 
penis made the show. Yeah. Um, I think that's all four quarters of kind of like what we wanted to look at. We looked at Smash's storyline, Lila's storyline, Street and Saracen, uh, the big moments of the show. I want to do a real quick overtime. If anybody has any like favorite quotes uh, from this episode or any scenes that were kind of not a major part of those main threads, but that you really loved or that you think people out there really loved. Um, I can start with one, and uh, it's Tyra, who was so fantastic this episode again. Uh, and I don't know, May, at this point – Hearing the podcast back when I listen to our our show, I don't know if you love Riggins more or if you love Tyra more. Mm. I have a raging crush on both, obviously. And I think, <laughs> again, my big announcement <laughs> that I'm bisexual is like nobody cares, but it's true. And so I feel like now looking back, I'd actually much be much more in love and falling for and begging to go out with Tyra than I would with Riggins. I mean, it's Riggins hasn't like, you know, his thing, but it's so limited. It's like Tyra's a, <laughs> she's like an all around total package. Come okay. on. All right. True. So we, so we got to get the call out to Adrian just as hard as we're trying to get the call out to Tim. Uh, yeah. I mean, to Taylor while he's out uh, yeah. photographing wolves. Uh, we got to get a hold of Annie Palicki, um, <laughs> which I, look, you're going to love her even more. This, this scene where she, he walks up to Riggins as he's trying to repair his truck and Billy's laying there oh, yeah. drinking a beer, just watching him. There's nothing Billy likes more than watching Riggins have to pay for the shit he's done. And he's just sitting yes. there loving it. And then she walks up and slaps him and she goes, anyone but her. That's actually a two page long scene. Whoa. And less is more. Oh, one hundred. Yes, less it is. is more. It's a two page yes. long scene in the script. I'm not going to read it. Uh, maybe one day if the if, if the audience wants to hear what it is, uh, we can do it, but not today. Uh, but yeah, anyone but her slap uh, over wow. time. That's one of my favorite moments in the episode. Mm. I think my favorite weird – not my favorite moment, but one moment where I was a little like, whoa, um, there's – this is so dumb. But there's a big <laughs> hit during the game, like a brutal-looking hit, and they cut to Connie, uh, Tammy, and she's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, there's some sometimes you don't know what else to do except laugh when you see something just vicious. You're just like, oh, God, what was yeah. that? I thought it was a genius <laughs> editing move. <laughs> okay, I'll have to look for that. May, what um, about I you? Think, yeah, my favorite one, one moment that I thought was really hilarious is you when you kind of after you have the date and it doesn't go well, et cetera, and you sort of trying to talk to Landry about it. And you're sort you sort of like, again, mentioned the members only jacket and like how it's, you know, stupid and didn't work or whatever. And yes. he goes like, hey, don't blame the couture. OK, he like says, <laughs> don't blame the couture, which I think is very brilliant. <laughs> I, I love that Landry is could not hate the football team more, but still just it's a we it's yeah. we it's you and yes. him together he is living off of your <laughs> success as qb1 all right that is oh, yeah. the episode we're gonna real quick go to the press box i think we already answered one question from lefty Ader, uh with whether or not coach improv calling uh landry lance uh i have a question from youtube actually from scott crampton he says in the credit sequence no actor has their name over the picture of themselves outside of jesse plemons who has that treatment in both season one and season two uh wow. Did the did they know they had a future Oscar winner, or did he just know somebody in the editing room? <laughs> uh, what do you think? Did it bug you that you? No, it never bothered me. I never. I always thought it was kind of funny, and I tried to figure out if there was any logic to it, and I never figured it out. I think. Is I it think just coaches, random? I think coaches over you, Minka's over my name, and a twisty treat. Which I mean, I love ice cream, and then. Uh, What's what? we got? Twisty treat. Yeah, twisty treat. You don't know what a twisty treat is? It's an ice no, cream shop. I don't. It's an ice cream shop that's actually shaped like an ice cream cone. Have you never seen? Just watch no. the opening credits of the show. Watch the opening it. credits. Okay. And then yeah, stop pressing skip on your Netflix <laughs> or whatever you're watching it on. Uh, and then and then I think Amy T Garden has like she's got the marquee. Amy T Garden over just a sweaty Taylor Kitsch in the locker room looking Woo! up with those just eyes that can stare into your soul mm. uh yeah but no i i never got i never and i don't think we i never noticed i never cared i don't I, know i noticed i didn't care at all <laughs> i mean as long as my name's up there you know yeah 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 uh may i think you have one from the press box do I have one from the press box? Oh, is I actually do have one from the press box, which, you know, I can echo. Um, I don't know who it's from, so you might have to jump in for that. But uh, I've got one that says, Zach, mm -hmm. this one's for Zach. Zach, 
can you wear something else? <laughs> That's from the entire listening community. <laughs> well, not the listening. It's clearly they're watching. <laughs> right. Sure. Exactly. We appreciate. I'm thankful to have their support. In I have this two endeavor. names for you. Steve Jobs and Barack Obama. Oh, my God. Okay. Are you putting yourself in the same class? Wait, does I'm Barack not. Obama always to... wear the same thing? I think he always wore like the same color tie so he wouldn't have to think about it. No, I've oh seen him Lord. in all different kinds of clothes. You can't throw Now, him. but when he was president. And as president of the Friday Night Lights Book Club, I don't want to have to think about what to wear. Okay. But wearing a hat well, that on says of Steve- is like different than wearing like a black turtleneck. You on behalf I mean? of Steve Jobs, I want to say thank you to everybody out there who is commenting in the rate and review area of Apple Podcasts and leaving us comments in YouTube. Everybody out there that's listening uh, – Please go subscribe at Apple Podcasts. Press that subscribe button. It doesn't mean you got to listen. You just got to surpri- subscribe. And the same thing over at YouTube. <laughs> subscribe so you uh, you get those notifications every time a new episode. Yeah, it's just an empty of its, gesture. Of just it's not subscribe. only football. Just, you know. Look, we're fluffing the numbers. Who cares? <laughs> it's not only football. Friday Night Lights and beyond. We'll be back next Thursday with more Friday Night Lights goodness. On behalf of myself, Scott Porter, Mae Whitman, and Steve Jobs, we'll see you next week. <laughs> Peace. Peace.